Hello and welcome. Now we're going to talk about anabatic and catabatic winds. What we're going to do is talk about what are they, so we'll try to define them, how are they caused, where you can find them, and tips to help remember that for the um, exam. An anabatic wind is a daytime event, um, typically in alpine regions, where the sun heats the surface um, unequally, so there's a differential heating. The surfaces, particularly those sloped and facing the sun, will get more heating than the surrounding areas. This warm surface in turn heats the air immediately adjacent to it. This air immediately adjacent to the mountain then um, becomes more buoyant and starts to move upwards. The band of air affected by this process is a two or three hundred feet thick. As the air moves up the slope, it may even generate a cumulus cloud, not always, but often. And the air at the bottom is replaced by air flowing in from the valley base. We end here with a circulation, air flowing up the slope because it's more buoyant and air flowing down uh, in the center of the valley um, to replace the air that's been drawn up. So for a glider pilot, the better place to be in these circumstances is quite clearly closer to the mountain. Um, and a poor place to be would be in the center of the valley where the sinking air is. However, as the day progresses and we move to night and the, the sun stops warming the surface, we get a situation uh, where we can generate now a catabatic wind. And this is very common. In this case, the, the previously warm surface has cooled the air right beside it because the surface is cooled, it's radiated off its heat. The cold air adjacent to the mountain, which is cooler than the air further out, is now denser and slides down the hill. And it's replaced from the top by air from the center of the valley. So now we've got a circulation movement where the air slope flows down the mountain slope and up the center of the valley. Now for a glider pilot, clearly the better place to be would now be the center of the valley um, and not at the, um, by the mountain slope. Now, these effects can be found in, in even the relatively modest hills in Wales, but the, but the anabatic flows won't be very strong, and very rarely got any strength to them at all. So they, they need to be supported by some uh, prevailing wind of some description, um, uh, which will just help the situation and you might find that you can just stay airborne for a little longer. However, in alpine areas, where the bigger hills or bigger mountains, then these effects are, are very noticeable and very strong. And if you get it around the wrong way, um, it could be highly dangerous. You do not want to be um, caught out flying in the wrong place down a, a, a difficult mountain valley. Now, in order to remember all of this, what I do is I say, right, the, uh, the shepherd um, uh, in the morning walks up the hill uh, um, to tend his sheep. And when he does that, the, the anabatic wind is blowing on his back. At the end of the day, when he returns uh, uh, towards evening, the catabatic flow has started. Um, and as he's walking down the valley, down towards the valley, the wind is still on his back. So lucky old shepherd. Now, which one's which? Is it anabatic or catabatic? And I can't remember. Well, what I do is I say to myself, well, cats, I know cats come out at night, and therefore catabatic wind is a nighttime thing. So, thank you very much for um, uh, uh, watching this, and I'll see you next time.